Do we have time for one more question? Sure. Go tell ahead. me about tell me about asymmetry. I think my contact my content has created a lot of anxiety in MSE people interested in MSE. It's created anxiety that oh my existing asymmetry is going to get worse or I'm going to have an asymmetric expansion. One side is going to push more than the other. Do you think, what do you, what would you say to patients who are worried about asymmetry? Okay. Let's first clarify asymmetry. From my experience of practice, asymmetry are mostly caused by occlusal can't. Okay. I, yesterday I actually saw a patient, the whole maxilla actually one side more than the other. But that's the only patient I ever see. All the asymmetry I see and happen because there's an occlusal can't. When there's a little can't, your lower jaw follows. That's how most asymmetry happens. So asymmetry is not really a, a symmetry of the left and right. It's more of a can't that will happen. Now, when that can't happen, we expand you as normal. Because if your jaw is this way, we do have to put the uh, <clears throat> MNC parallel to the jaw, okay? So those corrections are pretty easy. Once so I expand you, because we can't put one MNC longer than the other, it had to be parallel to the floor to get expansion. After we expand that, we can simply intrude this side or let this side erupt more, it depends on your height of the face, then we can correct symmetry. Now for adult, the jaw, return or back, we don't know because it depends on your jaw is it even length or not even length. If you had it for a long time, chances are your jaw one length, one's longer than the other, okay? Then you might get a 50% correction, okay? Everybody gets some kind of correction, okay? If you're a younger kid, teenager, chances are you get 100% return. Time out. So you're saying that um, a patient might present with what appears to be an asymmetry in the maxilla, but really it's just a cant. You correct that cant ortho orthodontically yes. by using TADS to intrude the lower side, to pull those teeth in, to flatten. Yes. And this results in the lower jaw correcting itself simply by repositioning. Yes. In, in accordance with the corrected maxilla. Yes, unless if your jaw already grown this way, one longer than the other. For example, in a 45-year-old male who's had this cant for 30 years, maybe now he has a permanent bone change in his lower jaw that makes it impossible to, for the lower jaw to correct. Yeah. But for those patients, I usually expect maybe a 50% correction. Uh, you expect some correction, but not some 100%. And then um, how, do you, how do you finish that off? Don't we just leave it the way it is. I see. Unless a patient has a severe TMJ problem, because usually the shorter side is the side with the problem, okay? Then you might consider surgical procedure to correct it. Okay, some, some kind of mandibular surgery? Yes, to correct it. Or if patient is gonna have an MMA to, to start with, then you might not want to correct it, just let the surgeon correct it. I see. At the same time, okay. I see. So it depends. But my surgeon, he always want me to correct as much as I could before the surgery. Because surgery correction, there's always side effects, okay. So if I can correct anything orthodontically, he always encouraged me to correct them. First, even less work to do. I understand. What do you say to people though, who say that you're taking that, that the cant or the asymmetry is actually in the, in the uh, basal bone and that you're just putting a Band-Aid over it by moving the teeth to try to correct the asymmetry? That's a very good question. When we're moving the, when we're moving the, the teeth, okay, we're actually moving the whole section from canine to second molar. That's five teeth, okay completely together with the bone up. Now, a common, a common fact is that when you first do the intrusion, your gum will swell up around the area. So vigorous brushing is very important. So once the inflammation go away, the bone will remodel, the whole section of bone actually will remodel back in, okay? When we finish the treatment, when we finish 
the teeth look normal. The bone level is actually normal. Oh, interesting. So when you intrude teeth, people think of that as only the teeth are changing, but of course, for teeth to be intruded, the bone has to change. Yes, the bone has to change. And one thing you can tell if you have a closed open or not is when you look at, take a picture up front, if you see your lips one higher than the other, okay, from the eye, from the pupil of the eye to the corner of the lips, then you have a camp. Yeah, for example, if people look at me right now, there's, and my lips are closed, you might see this side is a little lower, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this would indicate that I have a cant like this. Yes. So if I were to your case, I would just expand normally and then correct the cant later on. So based on the way I look with my mouth shut, you would intrude the teeth on this side. You would yeah. pull, pull these teeth up like this. Exactly. And then my lower jaw would follow, hopefully. Hopefully will follow. Hmm. Hmm. At your age, you'll probably expect 50 to 75% correction. I'm 30 years old, just so the audience knows. Yeah, so I'm getting into that range where I'm starting to stiffen up. Exactly, exactly. Now, the real asymmetry is very rarely seen. Okay. Now, another question is, patients sometimes call me, I think I have um, asymmetric expansion. Asymmetric expansion, to me, I never see one legitimate one after 300 cases. I never see one, okay? <clears throat> because sometimes when you have a can, when you expand more, one side would look like get more, but it's not. A patient start paying more attention at the teeth. They start thinking more, but it's not. Because every force is a reaction force. Unless we do, do say, for example, we do surgical assist on one side only, okay? If you have, for example, a true shift maxilla, everything level but maxilla shift, okay? I haven't had one patient. I just saw one yesterday. But if I would approach the case, I would probably say, let's put the MSC in, have the surgeon do surgical assist on this side, then we can probably expand this side a little more. Wow, that's from, so you would actually be inter, you would actually experiment with that kind of uh, uh, novel treatment approach. Yes. Surgical yeah, assist on one side. Yes. But that's much rarer. P probably when people watch my videos, they think asymmetry is very common. But what you're saying is true asymmetry, asymmetry at the level of the bone. It is really, really happen. And in most cases, same thing as, uh, let's go back to the topic about the lower jaw, We're talking about how to widen the lower jaw. Yeah. The true narrow lower jaw, I probably hardly ever see. Okay. I can think of maybe one patient. Those patients usually have this, what we call a syndromic patient. patient. Patient born with certain kind of syndrome, they have a not developed lower jaw. And most of the small, narrow lower jaw problem is not because, it's not because the jaw is not wide enough. It's because jaw is receding. I see. And it's, it's almost always the case that the upper jaw, not when you look at the teeth, but when you look at the bone, is narrower than the lower jaw. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, in almost all cases after MSE expansion, you can match the lower with the upper simply by moving the teeth like we discussed earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Dr. Ting. Um, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I feel like I've created a lot of anxiety for people about asymmetry. I think that uh, you've given people comfort that a asymmetry MSE problems or what appears to be asymmetry MSE problems, really it's more um, tooth, tooth borne issues. Those can be corrected simply by moving teeth orthodontically, which you've probably done in dozens and dozens and dozens of cases. Yes. So great, that's great. Um, well, I think that's probably enough for now. We've been going for a while. We'll definitely have to split this up into smaller pieces. I think we've probably been going for well over an hour. Um, oh, yes. So yeah, <laughs> well, we'll <tr> two hours. <laughs> We'll, we'll chop it up into bite-sized question and answers. And um, thank you very much for your time.
And uh, I'm sure the audience is going to really appreciate all your insights. And we look forward to having Dr. Vaughn on at some point to discuss surgical assist. Um, and, and then I'll, I'm sure we're going to get some further questions that the audience is going to want to have answered. And maybe we'll have you on again to do a follow-up interview if you would be willing. 